I'm male 38, I've been with my wife Natalie, female 37, for eight years, married for four years. Natalie has a daughter from a previous relationship, Kaya, female 12. Kaya's dad left when she was a newborn. We have no idea where he is. I love her as if she were mine. She calls me dad and has a great relationship with me. I told Natalie from the very beginning that I would like to have biological children and she said she is open to having more kids. After we got married, we bought a nice place and started trying for a baby. After a year, we did some testing and all came back normal. My wife said IVF would be too costly and hard on her body. I was secretly devastated, but I decided to come to the terms with the fact that I'll never have any biological kids. This was until a few days ago when I found out from Natalie's sister that Natalie lied to me. She and her sister got into a fight in our house and her sister screamed, at least I don't take pills behind my husband's back and claim I'm infertile. Does he know you had an abortion? I was floored. My wife kicked her sister out and started crying, saying she really didn't want another kid and didn't want to lose me. I can't believe she lied to me instead of talking to me. I just left. I'd been staying at my parents' house since then. Natalie begs for me to come back and she says we can try for a baby. Kaya even messaged me to come back. My parents think I should just move on and give her another chance. She made a mistake and she apologised. Am I the arsehole for wanting a divorce for this lie? <laughs> wow. Oh there's lies God. and then there's lies. That's a lie and a half, isn't it? Oh so she's been God. taking pills mm -hmm. behind his fellow's, fellow's back, back yeah. even yeah. though and saying that she can't have kids. Yeah. And Ooh. I think by the sounds of it, she got pregnant and also right. aborted. Yeah. Without telling him. That is, oh, what, and it should he forgive her and just continue as normal? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. That's so difficult. Because yeah. that's a lying half, isn't it? That's, that's so deceitful, I think. It is yeah. so deceitful. But, like, this is why you need to talk to each yeah. other and just be honest with each other. Because I understand that she's, if she's in the position where she's like, look, I, I don't want any more kids. Mm. And she said, you know, oh, the there's a possibility that I'll want more kids to a new fella. And he's kind of like, well, that's good because I want kids of my own. And then she's actually realized, no, I, I don't want another kid for whatever reason. Don't want to put my body through it, wh mm. whatever it is. Yeah. And she's lied to him because she's scared that if she's honest with him, that he will leave her. But I'm kind of like... It's such a lie. Yeah, it it's is. such a lie that if he finds out, he's almost definitely going to leave Do you. you. Think he so will? I'm like, I, f I feel like it's so. Oh, I think it's so hard. This one. I know it is really difficult. I think being honest with your partner from the beginning, if you do or don't want kids, and I know people can change their minds. That's absolutely mm. fine. But I think doing it behind a husband's back that. To me, th there's no communication there. They've kind of lost trust. They've lost communication. And if she doesn't want kids and he does, it's his decision at the end yeah. of the day. Then does he stay with someone knowing that he's not going to have children or does he find someone that does? I think that's more the issue. Yeah. I think the issue is more, not the fact, I think that she's taken tablets and then she's like lied to him about being infertile and stuff. Yeah. People do stupid things. Yeah. Don't know the circumstances. Yeah. I'll yeah. let her off the hook. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let her off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah don't mean anything for me but there you go <laughs> um i think the, the bigger issue is if he wants kids yeah and if she doesn't want kids yeah how much is he willing to sacrifice that yeah to stay in the marriage and i feel like that is a hard one to come to terms with i personally think if he loves her and he wants to be with her and he can't imagine his life without her then he should sacrifice not having kids yeah. i think if he weighs it up and he puts which is shitty, but you kind of he's gonna to have to do this, weigh up his wife against a future child. Mm, yeah. Which is kind of what you're doing. And if he thinks actually the child is more for me, then mm. he leaves her. Yeah. I think like I've been putting Black this... and white though, isn't it? Look how <laughs> yeah. black and white I made that yeah. when it's really not. <laughs> but I've been putting this um predicament before. Like I've been in previous relationships where they've said, I don't wanna have children. Mm. And as much as I did love the other person, it was kind of like, well, no, that comes first to me. Yep. So if it was my situation, 
I leave, but that's only because I do want a family. Yeah. So it is really, that. really difficult. How, how open and honest of yeah. you I to know. share that with everybody. No, it is. It's one of them things. It's life. Yeah, yeah I agree. Because like, same with you, because we've been together a long time and we have talk about kids. But if you said to me, like, you don't want children mm. at all, it's a, mm. it, there's nothing to do with it. I won't leave you for it. Oh, I think cool. I just because I couldn't imagine life not with you in it. I'd be really careful at the, at the time of the month that it is right now. My yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't cry. <laughs> but I feel like that. But that's because I prioritize probably y- you and us over a family because I don't have a family to like put it against. Mm. But for some people, that's obviously very different, and I totally yeah. respect both ways. Yeah. So he's just gonna have to work out how much he wants to. Yeah. You know, where family ranks on his list. Yeah. It's so hard as well because I think, like, humans are just messy anyway, aren't they? Yeah. And, like, everyone has to live their own life. You've, you've got to do what's right for yes. you because you are the only person that's living your life and you can't go along with what someone else thinks or anything like that just because you're trying to please someone because I think in the end, you you're going to resent them for that. I think there's always going to be that little bit of resentment there. So I I think this one's really hard because she's clearly, she's already a mother. She's already kind of bought a kid up and and equally he's done the same with her kid. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's such a difficult one, this. It's Mm. so hard. And I'm just like, you just need to talk to each other and be open and be honest. I think he has to be honest with himself. Yeah, I think that's the hardest thing. I think he's going to have to be open and honest with himself and make a tough call. Like, you obviously made a tough call. People have to make the tough calls if that's the avenue you want in life. I feel like it's sometimes easier not to make that hard call. Mm. But then if it is something that you really want, you're just going to have to do it. Yeah, you've got to bite the bullet sometimes. But do you think that he is going to have lost her trust now going forward? I think that trust can come back. I I understand that it's... It depends how much he wants to be in that relationship, I guess. Yeah. I think because it's something like that, and she obviously is having issues with the idea of having a kid, another kid and stuff, and he's obviously acted in a certain way, which... I'm not a big fan of and Mm. felt like probably not the best way to do with it. But if he really like wants to continue relationship with her, I think he can get over that. Yeah. But I don't think he can get over the fact that if he stays with her and 10 years later, he does want a kid and he's made the wrong choice. I feel like that'll hurt him. Yeah. Yeah. That'll eat him up. Yeah. I, 27 female, have a 34 male husband. We got married six years ago and we were together for three years prior to that. When we first met, he was very fit and quite the gym rat. However, since our wedding, he has gained over 225 pounds and he's still adding to that number. He's not the man I fell in love with. Every day when I come home from work, the kitchen is trashed. He can't clean up for himself anymore and needs assistance with many daily tasks. It hurts to see how much he has lost himself. And honestly, I'm getting quite tired. I didn't sign up for this. It's like I'm working two jobs. Last week, when I served him divorce papers, he blew up on me. He said, how could I do this to him and accuse me of being fat phobic? Since then, his entire side of the family has been harassing me non-stop. They've been telling everyone, I know that I'm a terrible person, it's really starting to get to me. So, am I the asshole for divorcing my husband because he's extremely overweight? Okay, so what what is it in stone? 16 stone. 16 stone. Just over 16 stone he's gained okay. since marriage. We're from the UK, so we don't do the uh, metric measurements. We do, <laughs> yeah, because I don't. We, pounds never really seem to like hit. We don't do pounds at all. No, it's like... Not really? It it's varies sometimes, doesn't it? Stone yeah. and kilograms. kilograms. Yeah, yeah. pounds yeah. now and again when you see it, but... It um, always confuses me, you know, when you go to the doctors and they go, oh, pop on the scales, and you're like, these aren't th- these aren't in stone. And they're like, yeah, okay, get off. And you're like, what was it? Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Tell me. Yeah, you don't know what it is. <laughs> I f- it sounds to me like there's a bigger issue at play here. Yeah. yeah. If he's eating and gaining weight quite rapidly after something... I feel like there might be something more to this than yeah. just his eating habit. Yeah. Be some sort of depression there mm. or some sort of like other yeah. illness there that's causing him to do that. So I feel like it's serving the way she like writes about it. It's like, oh, you know, I'm tired of this. And it's like two jobs and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it sounds a little bit heartless. It, it's that question in it of like, would you stay with someone if they gained loads of weight? Like, I think she's kind of like, well, no, I'm not because... 
he's not the person that I married. But then I'm like, that's kind of skin deep a little bit. Yeah, There's got to be is. more to that. Because I don't think you can leave someone because they've gained excess weight. I feel like if you love someone, you're going to be there no matter what and you can help or talk to or support or whatever. But mm. I feel like offering divorce papers, I'm like- Yeah, it's a bit harsh, in it? Yeah, I'm like, do you, did you just like the person because of their physique and body? Because that's going to change anyway. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to look the same when I'm 70. No. Unfortunately um, not. I'm I'll age better probably. Yeah, you probably will. <laughs> I'm going the other way. Yeah, me so too. I'm like, if, if, so if I put like 16 stone on, would you would you still love me? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What I if would. I shave my head? Yeah, like I would. Sinead O'Connor. Well, um, yeah. For no reason, oh, just, right, to, okay. just to be a dick. You just, 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 just tested me now on yeah. camera. <laughs> just, just what like, if I did this? <laughs> or, uh, what if I cough my arm on my leg? What if I had a tattoo <laughs> on my face? No, and yeah, it's fine because it's, it's what is... What's the person like to spend time with? And what's the person like, <laughs> you know, aside from looks? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. if you if you like the person and you can... Because when you're older, you're not going to be jumping in and out of bed with people no. at like 60. You're not going to be fucking like rabbits. You're no. going to be sat watching shit or... This talking. is a whole new revelation. But, no, no, speak new for shit. yourself. Not, not as much. Not as much. You know, you limit it a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you, so you're probably going to be like... You know, you're both going to look different. You're both not going to look the same as when you got married. So, yeah. But then at that point, do you want to spend time with that person? And I yeah. feel like if you do, Agreed. then that that's more than looks is going to be anywhere. So don't be so vain. No, I think it is just a sex and it is sad because if you do love someone, it's the person that's on the inside, not who's on the outside as mm. well. And it does sound like an underlying issue that yeah. she needs to be like, how can I do it to help and like let, let's go to the gym together let's yeah. like egg each other on and being like come on let's do this fitness thing together like he might be really really like depressed yeah. he might have self-esteem and confidence issues it's, exactly it might be really hurting him to the point where he's not been open with her to go look i i, I need some help mm. yeah she needs to acknowledge that yeah exactly and he, she sounds like she's jumping at the first hurdle While attempting to refinance our house, I discovered my husband was sending money to another woman. Wow, what a start. <laughs> okay. After more digging into his business finances, I discovered he was taking this woman on two trips out of the country as well, while he left me home with his kids. After the second trip out of the country, they decided to call it quits after I caught them in the hotel together. Three months later, he was asking to add a second wife, which is illegal in the States. Brave. What? Yeah. what? We've been together six years by now, married three, and now he wants to add another woman to our relationship. He portrayed like he was this monogamous loving husband in the beginning, but now he claims he's poly and I would be selfish not to do what makes him happy. This is the third marriage for both of us. He knows I divorced my previous two husbands for cheating. He's adamant on being with this other woman in addition to me, even though I don't agree. I have moved out of the house and filed for divorce. The problem now is everyone is asking me to give the marriage another chance. It's like they're saying it's my fault because I was the one who moved out. I raised his kids the last six years and I'm the only mum his youngest daughter knows. Their mum isn't in their life. She cries saying, I know dad messed up, but can you come back home? The kids' godparents are marriage counsellors through the church and are asking me to give the marriage another chance. This is the second woman he's cheated on me with and has apparently been cheating on the whole six and a half years we've been together. How many chances do I need to give him? He's saying he loves me and wants to work things out with me, but still wants both of us. I was a stay-at-home mother, so I think he's just going to miss a clean house, clean clothes, professional driver for the kids, and in-home sex, since the other partner is out of the state. We have a 60-day waiting period before we can finalise divorce. At this point, I'm second-guessing myself if I'm doing the right thing. Am I the asshole for not wanting to give him another chance and finalise the divorce? Wow! Absolutely not. Like, is, just, is Polly two? Is Polly where you can have two? Uh, yeah, I think it's you can have as many as you like. Is Polly, uh, Paul, yeah, is, po is Polly like loads? Yeah, I think it's like more than one partner. So it's you like believe Mormons. In more. Yeah, I think Mormons so. are like that. Certain yeah, get sets on of, Google. Certain Clear sets of Morgans up. are on this. Uh, Morgans? Morgans. Morgans. <laughs> Sorry, if Morgan Freeman, Ring. if you watch it. Dexter Morgans. <laughs> Mormons. So Mormons. Mor <laughs> right. So. Uh, Mormons. 
Polly? <laughs> Poly Poly Polygamous. Yeah. I can't, I can't read. Again, while we're doing this, just subscribe. <laughs> it's just below. Hit the like. We did this on the last video, so yeah, do it again. Come on. Come on, <laughs> So everybody. do Mormons believe in polygamy today? Polygamy. I can't say the word. Polygamy <laughs> today. <laughs> no, the church is not authorized and still prohibits it. As the early 1890s, the practice of polygamy came to an end. All right, so it's been gone a while ago, so tell oh, that. Okay. It's not Mormons. Okay. But yeah, so two or more. Two or more. I yeah. Um, I'm I'm not for it personally. What if I came to you and I, oh, I want another wife? I'd be like, go and get one then, mate. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> like, please find someone else. <laughs> no, I'm just like, I know it's it's acceptable in some cultures mm -hmm. around the world. I'm yeah. not for it personally. I I can't imagine as a fella having like two or three wives because I feel like a lot of fellas struggle with one. Yeah. I think like, having two or three sounds <laughs> fucking painful. I'm like, surely that's a nightmare for, for the bloke. This is yeah. when people cheat. I think that about cheating though as well. When people like have long-term affairs or cheat. I'm yeah. always like, I couldn't be bothered. No. Nah. I really couldn't be asked. No, the shit. Trying to keep secrecy and then balancing two. Yeah. I'm like, is that yeah. balancing one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope. Oi, oi. <laughs> no, but I, yeah, I'm like, I don't, I can't see it being a good thing for the women involved, mm. personally. I'm like, so if you're sharing a, a husband, a partner, mm. I'm like, well, what what is the woman getting out of it? Would you think it'd be different if she was like, right, okay, if that's going to be the case, I want to get another bloke involved. Right, oh, just make like a team. Yeah, <laughs> like, would, he, would he be happy with that? I, so, I bet he wouldn't be. That, well, that's what I mean. This is the thing that not annoys me, but it's always oh. like, how come it works this way, not that way? Yeah. A bit yeah. like threesomes. Blokes are always like, yeah, I want two girls. But if the girl goes, okay then, but I, I want another guy. Yeah. I'm not fucking seeing another dude. Yeah, you fucking tell me. Like, you got yeah, equal women. Yeah, equals equal. Exactly, it's 2024 about equality. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree in silence. I bet he wouldn't want another no, fellow involved. I don't involved think he would. Watching his wife getting ploughed in back room while he's watching oh, no. TV. I feel like she's in a predicament though with, you know, like being the kind of mother to his youngest. Yeah. yeah. And having that relationship with his youngest. I always think it's really hard to kind of come away from a relationship when you have got a bond with the kids hmm. do you know what i mean i've like, seen if it you... said any age of how old these people were but it doesn't no mm. and um you know this is the third marriage did it yeah, say? yeah. yeah. so they've clearly been through trials and tribulations in the past to a point where you would think you have more of an idea of what you want from a yeah. relationship if, mm -hmm. if this is the third time you've been married so for him to kind of play this like perfect guy to start out with and then all of a sudden oh actually i want another wife and i've been cheating with you and had essentially another wife since we've been together i'm kind of like no just just, just get the divorce papers through love yeah. maybe just give up on men completely <laughs> at <laughs> this stage just, women. yeah later does do you think polyg <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> polygamy <laughs> <laughs> do you think polygamy ever works do you no. think it's ever been a successful no. polyamorous said it no. relationship? No, I don't. Uh, I think they probably you think is. It could work. I think there are people out there that probably don't want a family, probably do want to, I don't know, sleep around with different people, but also have someone at home to keep them company and I mean, you do could you know do it. I mean? What more than one person at home? Yeah, so I have two fellas at home, like you've got two husbands. Depends what they look like. <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of feel like it's it, it's similar to you know people that have like an open relationship. Yeah. Like oh we're married, but we're, it's cool for us to sleep. No, with I don't think people. that's the same. I don't think that's. The, I'm gonna I'm gonna defend polygamy on that Why? only because I think an open relationship is very different. Polygamy is obviously two people, three people, one person and two others married. Mm. Mm. There's more of a relationship. Where I think an open relationship is more just about sex in it. Mm. That's just about sleeping with whoever you want, but not in like a relationship sort of sense. Because either in polygamy, just like more of like you've got two wives or two husbands or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But in an open relationship, more about just sleeping around a bit more. Yeah. So that's kind of different. Yeah, There's less could, emotion yeah, but involved. You could, you could have another relationship with someone if you've got an open marriage, couldn't you? 
Yeah, It'd be quite easily yeah. and accessible for you to do that. Well, that and if you were sleeping polygamy. with the same person, especially as a woman, there would be some kind of like emotional connection there. So do you think that an open marriage would turn into polygamy? Well, it depends whether someone was willing to actually commit to a relationship with another person. But I, I just, I, I personally, I'm sure there's going to be people in the comments that disagree. Yeah. But I personally, I'm like, how can you have a meaningful relationship with more than one person at a time? Yeah, I'm greedy. I, I just want one, really. And yeah. and, and yeah. not not only that, but the two people you have a relationship with, how do you treat them? Because they are different people. What, yeah. They're both going to have different qualities. Yeah. Therefore, you are going to treat them slightly differently because of their qualities. And that's where jealousy comes up. And then yeah. there's friction between those two people, which I imagine is constant. Yeah, because they're married to the one person, not to each. It's not like yeah, a three-way exactly. marriage. It's not like, oh, we're all all in this together we all, all do, you know, in like, this together. do you know what i mean though yeah like, I it's do. not that it's one person and two mm. people yeah. yeah so i i don't really understand how that works like emotionally so i only ever see like stories like this on like you know them obscure like channels that are on tv yeah like, yeah or, or like lewis or yeah somewhere. that's yeah. the only time i ever really see these where, where they're like <laughs> quite far out examples yeah. but I wonder, I wonder how like how common it is for I, can't, I don't want to say the word again, but polygamy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, how common it, it is as a thing. Yeah, I don't Does he just want to get his rocks off all the time? Is that, does he just want to, sl- will he come into two, then it'll turn to three, then it'll turn to yeah, four? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Because I'm like, equally, way, so. you know, when you do yeah. see these like Louis Theroux type programs. Louis so, Theroux is a British guy, by the way. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah. But, you watch them, and to me, I don't know whether they did, I'm sure they do parts of it on purpose during the editing to make you feel or think a certain way, but it always seems like there's one instigator. Yeah. There's one instigator. It's normally a fella mm. that's like, oh, no, I love having two wives. And the two wives are just silently pissed off because yeah. they're like, I love you, but I don't. Oh, he's spending today with her. Or do you know yeah. what I mean? There's there's some resentment there that I'm like I can't see that being healthy in a relationship because it's it's bound to happen yeah. when you're sharing love and affection and such deep emotions. No, do you know I, get, what I, mean? I get that as well. But it they might work it essentially by do you know what I mean? Like the women could go to it with each other. Like the men and another single woman could go. The other woman and the man. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of <laughs> every, man, everyone's man. involved. Maybe yeah. could be that what, way. So but... say there's say there's a fella and yeah. two women. Yeah. How are you juggling that as a relationship? Like you how are you sleep making... in the same bed? Yeah. No one's right. getting left out. Yeah. I don't want to be in the middle about... of time. Got to a wheel time. But these yeah. two women have to agree to wanting to sleep in a bed with another woman. But those two women might be agreeing to sleep with each other. They What's other so bi? So it's a bit yeah, like a Yeah, so it's a bit like everyone's getting happy oh, here. I just feel like that sounds hard work. Yeah, I feel sounds like Sounds like, that's... like yeah, you, you have a three-way probably and three or four times. After that, you've done it now, come and on. And in polygamy, <laughs> is, are you looking for like, so say you've got a wife and then you want another wife. Are you specifically looking for a wife that would be happy to go with your yeah, wife? Yeah, I, I think you're going to have to, aren't you? And yeah. how does your wife feel about this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She is she turning around and going like, well, I've I've never been by, but all of a sudden you want another wife and you want I to play happy families and sleep together. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's really difficult. I think for her, the story. I think she has to. I, I, it sounds like a no goer to me. Yeah, he's cheated too much. Yeah. If he did come and you'd been happily married, and then out of the blue, all of a sudden he's gone. You know what? I thought about polygamy. I want to be polyamorous. Yeah, and then you know, then have that conversation. Then I can imagine how it's going to go. Yeah. I can't imagine it's going to be a conversation. Sit gonna... down, Derek, you twat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I don't think it's going to be a long conversation. <laughs> but... No, but at least they've communicated yeah. with each other. And he's gone, this is what I'm thinking. And then equally, she can be like, I'm either on board or I'm not. Yeah. Mm. She's Rather like, actually, I think along. I've got this fella, this six foot five absolute stallion who mm. I won't mind being into a relationship. And then he's like, slow down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. I want to talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My 15 year marriage has been difficult. In some ways we work well as a couple and we have great kids. 
There has been emotional drama and our sex life has been tepid for a long time. My wife, 43 female, almost never initiates sex and usually rebuffs my attempts. We have sex monthly, give or take. A year and a half ago, out of nowhere, she said that I could have sex with other people. It was totally unexpected and unprompted and I was shocked and she really pushed it like, really, I mean it, you can. I responded that I didn't want to sleep with anyone but her, but we dropped it. Then six weeks ago, she said it again and really pushed it again. And again, I was surprised and said that I didn't want to sleep with anyone else. But the second time I said that, it wasn't really true. Oh, oh change your heart. No. The truth is that when she first offered that I could sleep with other people, it unlocked something in me. I started thinking of other women as potential sexual partners and thinking a lot more about sex. Creep mode unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> and recently, I made a friend, let's call her Anne. We were part of a local interest group and then we started meeting one-on-one -on -one every week. I told my wife about her and that we were friends. But it became increasingly clear that Anne was interested in me as more than a friend. A quick boink. Oi, oi. Boink. Last week, Anne came right out and said that she'd sleep with me if I wanted. All right, Anne, calm down. <laughs> okay, I don't, I, I I don't imagine that's how it for a week. <laughs> I told Anne that I was attracted to her, but that I was married and I cared about my family. But also that my wife had said I could sleep with other people. That I didn't <laughs> understand why my wife said it and that I talked to my wife about whether she really meant it. A few days later, I had the conversation with my wife. It went poorly. I told her that I loved her, loved sex with her and wouldn't put our marriage at risk but also that I was thinking of taking her up on the sex with other people thing if she was really okay with it and I told her about Anne's proposition. My wife was deeply hurt. She thinks I betrayed her by building a relationship with another woman and she doesn't think I had her permission to do that. She said that the first time she offered that I could sleep around, she actually wanted to sleep with someone else and was testing the waters and that she didn't go through with it after I said no. When she repeated the offer six weeks ago, she says our relationship was in a completely different place from where it is today and she thought that offering me sex with other people was the only way to save our marriage. This explanation does not ring true for me at all. In both cases, since I told her that I wasn't interested in other sexual partners, she thinks the offer was dead and I was wrong to think it should still be on the table. I never kissed Anne, never said I loved her, never even held her hand and now I've now told her that we need to remain just friends. I think my wife gave me permission to sleep around and that I went above and beyond by talking to her instead of taking her up on it. But she thinks I betrayed her and she's now saying she wants a divorce. Am I the arsehole? She's proper like dangled a carrot in front of his nose. That's a bit naughty of her to do that though. It is naughty. It, but I also, I kind of agree with the wife here because I think by getting into a, a relationship with Anne, which is what it sounds like, mm. is very different to, oh, you can sleep with somebody. I don't think he's done anything with this, Anne. No, I know, but he was like, oh, I haven't told her that I loved her. I'm like, fucking hell, what do you mean? You haven't told her yeah. you loved her? I, th I imagine that she, the wife was more like you, an equivalent of a one-night stand, not build a relationship up with another woman. Yeah. Yeah, I think before before the last part where he said, oh, you know, the first time she offered was because she actually wanted to yeah, sleep so with she, someone yeah, else. Yeah, she was testing the waters. And she was testing the waters, but then, she, you know, nothing ever came of that, so she didn't. Before that, I was like, is this that thing? Because I know some women that are like, do you know what? I could take it or leave it. You what know, sex, sex. Yeah. Like, especially when they get older and things like that. They're like, mm, it, it's fine, but I'm not like, oh, let's do yeah. it every week, every day, Took that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it Give does, me a pecker. <laughs> it does get to that point where you kind of like, you, you can see a difference between two sex drives in a relationship. Yeah. And I think especially as you're getting older and Some things hormonal like things that. as well. Like that as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Hinting towards that. Okay. Um, so I'm, I was kind of like, is she just going, look, you can sleep with someone else because she knows that she's not sexually fulfilling right, him yeah. because it's yeah. like once a month, but she don't want to lose him. But equally, she's like, 
I'm just not capable of more than once a yeah. month. But I, I, I still want you to be happy kind of thing. So that's that's where I thought it was going. Well, she needs to be clear about that, I think. Yeah. If you, if that's the case, and it's like, oh, sorry, I'm not shouting. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not me. Excuse me. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> no, but I think she needs to be clear about that. If it is that she's not fulfilling this extra, she needs to be honest and be like, look, go and sleep with someone else. That's yeah. absolutely cool with me. She can't test the waters and be like, go and sleep with other people. And him be like, okay, then. And then be like, how could you betray me? Yeah. Well, be honest then. If you, wa- if you both want to sleep with someone different, then both be honest. I agree, but I'm kind of like, he he hasn't slept with someone. No. He has built some kind of friendship, relationship with someone. You were looking for is, it as well. Which like, is different yeah, to just going out and shagging someone and do you know what I mean? I'll get some CD club and pick someone up or, or yeah. however yeah. it's done. Mm. It's like, well, no, you've actually built a, a friendship up here with yeah. this other hand, which I imagine that's why she's pissed off and that's why it's hurt her so much. Because yeah. she was like, whoa, hang on a minute. Our relationship's fine. It's the sexual aspect yeah. that yeah. I was getting at. So, mm. Yeah, and you're probably more like, because she wants to do it as well, that she should have just said, like, oh, I actually want to get plowed by some yeah. other fella as well. Yeah, because I'm like, if I'm... I think if that's the case and you and you're both in the same boat, but neither of you really wants to bring it up for fear of hurting the other one or whatever, I'm like, just just talk to me. I think yeah. it's a valid conversation to have. Just I think chat. if you're at that stage and you're in your forties and sex isn't doing it for you and you're not quite like your partner doesn't turn you on as much anymore and it's gone a bit dry mm. and you you discuss it and you go, Oh well maybe if we spiced it up by sleeping with other people I think it's a disaster, but I also think <laughs> it could be something that they could do to realize that actually it wasn't about sleeping with someone else. Yeah. I didn't like it. It yeah. wasn't good. It wasn't what I imagined it would be. Sometimes the mind can wander into places that make yeah. it seem like it's going to be a much better thing than it actually is. Yeah, like grass is greener. Exactly. Yeah. So I think like if they would have done it, both of them, he might have brought them closer together. Yeah, he yeah, done. Well, that was shit, actually. That wasn't what I thought. Yeah. And actually, I've, I'm closer to you now. Yeah. Could be a, a tool to make it. I don't advise this for anyone. No. Yeah. This in therapy or <laughs> don't take my word on this. <laughs> but I kind of think from the way I think about it, I imagine he could bring them closer together or he could bring them further apart. Yeah, but Either way, sounds shit. Yeah, rescue <laughs> <that's laughs> take. No, I, I agree with what you said in terms of his built a relationship with this person. He shouldn't have said to this Anne person like, Oh, my wife did say I could sleep with someone. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Because that's getting everyone's high hopes up. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Anne's probably thinking, Fool. Yeah. I, and fact, so she's filing for divorce. Is that what yeah. she's saying? Yeah. Because he's done this. I feel like that's pretty extreme. I feel like you dangled the carrot. He's misinterpreted it and gone a little bit too far down that road. Yeah. But so i feel like filing for divorce is pretty strong after that i'd be kind of like well that's a bit cheeky yeah, yeah. i'm like are there f- other issues here because it sounds Probably. like another issues thing that you know sex life ain't great you know you've dangled carrot he's chomped on carrot in a way that you didn't expect well have You're sex therapy or something for yeah. Yeah. Like, do yeah, something just... like you say to spice it up a little bit yeah try something people yeah. are too scared to try something like they always think the answer is sleeping with someone else but i don't think it would be no mm-hmm. it's not I don't think that'd be the answer. I think you'd sleep with someone else, realize their share, and you've got no connection there. Because sex is always better with a connection. Everyone knows that. Yeah. So I kind of think that it's just a fantasy that people have in their heads that think it'd be a good idea. Like the fantasy of a threesome. Yeah. Like people have that fantasy and go, oh, that'd be good. No, it wouldn't. It'd be all over the place. It's because people, people, <laughs> watch, everywhere. people watch porn. They see it porn. in a certain... Uh, they, they watch a porn. They see it in a certain way and kind of, whether they're young, old, whatever, I, yeah. I kind of feel like buy into the idea of like, oh, it's come around to fix washing machine and next yeah. thing that's going on. And you're like, it's yeah. not, it's not it doesn't work like that. that. No, yeah. that's I'm sure I just edited. referenced the most 80s like, <laughs> yeah. in the world. Yeah. Then. Yeah. <laughs> like, he puts down his tool belt. <laughs> 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 she puts cigar. <laughs> yeah. Go on then. <laughs> I, 35 male, have been married to my wife, 37 female, for seven years, and we were together for another three before that. We had a daughter, five female. 
On the outside of our marriage, it appears to be perfect. She and I own a nice house with a good school district, have a great kid and both work full time. Her job requires her to do some travel and wants her in the office three days a week. My job does not pay as well, but I work completely remote and spend a lot of time taking my daughter to soccer or to doctor appointments, as well as keeping up around the house. Before anyone asks, this is not a weight gain issue. I'm active and fit and my wife is the same. For the past four years or so, my wife has shown basically no interest in our marriage and acts more like my roommate than my partner. We have basically no romance or intimacy. When I say intimacy, I know some people will jump to sex, but to me, intimacy means acting like a couple hand-holding, kisses, cuddling, and obviously sex. None of those are really things my wife wants to do and makes it painfully obvious that she isn't interested. Before, she and I were very much an amazing couple. My wife also shows no interest in my life. She has forgotten important events like our anniversary and my birthday. Our last anniversary, she said she needed to cancel the dinner plans I made for the two of us because she had to work late on a Friday and travel for work the following week. I brought this up to my therapist who suggested couples therapy and is willing to give some recommendations. I brought this up to my wife who immediately shut it down saying, there's nothing wrong with me, I don't need therapy. I've made multiple suggestions to her for how we can possibly improve our relationship. Family vacation. Our daughter won't appreciate it. I don't see what five-year-old wouldn't want to go to the beach for a couple of days, but maybe I'm wrong. A romantic getaway for just her and I. No, I'm too busy at work. Or can't we just spend time together at home? Taking our daughter on a bike ride and going out to lunch on the weekend. I just want to relax, so I gave up trying to initiate anything with her and recently began looking for an out. I watched my parents in a failing marriage for a decade and don't want to put my child through that. I talked to a lawyer and got papers ready and can buy a condo in town to keep our daughter in the same school district with her friends since I can't afford our house by myself. I recently confronted my wife when our daughter was at a play date. I told her that I'm seriously considering leaving her since I feel since I feel as though I don't matter to her and our relationship is never a priority to her. I told her I have an exit plan and if she doesn't make changes by the new year, I'm going to file for divorce and full custody. She and I got into a big fight where she basically told me I was manipulative and an asshole for blindsiding her like that. I told her that none of this would be an issue if she cared about us or at least pretended to. I told her I don't want our daughter to see how unhealthy our relationship is. All of this happened yesterday. So Reddit, am I the arsehole for what I said to my wife and our argument after? Wow, it happened yesterday. He's on Reddit, yeah. writing it out straight wow. away. Wow. Go for it. Wow. <laughs> like... Get that second opinion going. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be straight on Reddit typing um... it out. I don't even think he's an arsehole. I don't he's think he sounds like he's doing the right thing. Literally doing everything he can to try and save this marriage, give suggestions. And if he's not feeling that the other person is committing to this relationship and meeting him meeting him halfway 50 50 it's never gonna work yeah exactly and he's, he seems like he's tried a lot of avenues that yeah. aren't yeah. just being you know taken up at all and so, the only thing to me is i don't think he said unless it did and i forgot but like how long this has been going on for you know they've been together 10 years seven yeah. years three years before how long has it been like it is now yeah i'd like to know it, that i don't think it mentioned because if it if it had been a long time yeah. Then I'd be like, yeah, definitely. But if it's been like six months, mm. I'd be like, talk it out. She might be in a weird space. Yeah. yeah. She might be like, you know, with a kid and she might be having that realization if she's similar to him, which is 35 and a. Mm. It might be having that, she might be having that whack of like, fucking hell, what's life? Where am I going? What's yeah. happening with myself? I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I feel like she, this happens a lot to yeah. people. The midlife crisis. Yeah. Yes. So she might be like, having some sort of mental crisis at the moment. But if he's been going on for a long amount of time mm. yeah. and you've tried to speak about it, then I feel like he's doing the right thing. 
for a short amount of time, I feel like, I don't know. You got to chat to her about it. Yeah. But if she want to go to therapy, I have it makes it even harder. No, yeah. that's hard, isn't it? When you're trying to bring up, you know, you're actively suggesting things yeah. that are just constantly getting shut down to the point where you're like, I don't know where to turn now. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. Again, been in the situation, similarly. <laughs> <laughs> Full of them today. No, but it's hard when you're trying to communicate with someone and equally they're just shutting the conversation down because you have got two options. Mm. You either stay in the relationship knowing full well that you're not going to be happy or equally you leave the relationship and as much as it's going to hurt find someone who does bring you happiness mm. i agree yeah you've, you've got to be honest and open you need to communicate it also, oh, uh, also yeah, go on. i feel like a, a, especially when like you've got a kid you've got yeah. a house you've got all these things you know careers and stuff like that i feel like it's really easy to start taking each other for yeah. granted because yeah. you've got so much going on and i feel like this is where people like drift slightly mm-hmm. and I, I think a lot of the time it is just that realization of no hang on this is a relationship and you know we want this future going forward because i think especially at the age they're at I feel like a lot of people get to that point where they're like, oh my God, is this what life yeah. is? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I thought I'd be happy all of the time. Yeah. I thought that everything would be great. I thought that, you know, all these Disney films that I watched as a kid, that, yeah. that was what was promised to me. And it's like, it's actually the opposite. If you can deal with life being pretty shit most of the time and those little fleeting moments of happiness and that's what you're kind of grasping for... I'm always aiming for those little moments of happiness and being so grateful when they come along mm. as well. I think yeah. if you look at life that way anyway, I think that's definitely something I've done more in the last few years. Yeah. Is look, don't expect everything to be great all the time. Yeah. yeah. There the, the will be greatness, but like you say, most of the time it's going to be either nondescript, mm. quite boring, yeah. nothing's really going to be happening, but that's fine. Because yeah. that's most people. Yeah. yeah. And then when the big moments do come, then they're great. Yeah, enjoy yeah. them. And I think it's a shame because I think especially in in society now where we've got social media and, you know, celebrities, such a thing and everything else that you kind of fed happiness and brilliance and mm. and all the greatness all the time. Have fun. Like, why aren't you having fun? Why aren't yeah. you happy having fun? <laughs> why are you on like, a jet ski in Dubai? That's just not, <laughs> that's just not it. <laughs> happiness is an emotion. It's not a way of being. Yeah. It's an emotion that's as fleeting as sadness or mm-hmm. grief or anything else. So just coming to terms with that a little bit, I think. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Expectations. Yes. Yeah, I like it. Managing expectations. Yeah, join us again next week for another counselling episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I always think as well, just to top it off, <laughs> as well, <laughs> this is just my personal opinion. I think as soon as you stop being intimate with someone, mm. whether it is you've gone months and months without having sex or having a cuddle or anything, for me, that's a massive red flag in my head. That's just me personally, but I, I know if I'm not close with someone, I'm like, something's wrong. Yeah, if you're not like, yeah, like actually touch your clothes sort of thing. Yeah, and mm. just nothing like the don't, I don't know, they don't come and give you a cuddle or anything. Yeah, like, yeah. They just don't. I think, that is, I think that'd think definitely be a sign of maybe we need to have a talk. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Just pat my head. Yeah. yeah. Just one pat, please. Just touch <laughs> it a bit. I, male 30, married my wife, female 30, around five years ago. We had been dating since high school. I loved how smart, ambitious, and driven she was. We bonded over academics and nerd stuff. We had both landed good jobs in the same city right after college. Three years into marriage, we had our baby. We decided on sending our child to daycare after six months. But when six months were up, she refused to go to work and send our child to daycare. Her argument was if I picked up more work, we could afford a single income household and she will be saving us money being a stay at home parent. That it was better for our child as well. I refused. Daycare is normal. If it was only me working, I would have to work way more hours, be exhausted and not spend as much time with my child. 
I said if she was scared about daycare, we can work in different shifts to stay home with our baby, like a tag team. She refuses, saying that doesn't work for her and as a mom, she needs to be with her baby all the time. This caused a huge fight between us. She quit her job, she took care of the baby during my work hours and wanted me to take care of cooking dinner on weekdays and cooking, cleaning and baby on weekends because stay-at-home mom deserves breaks too. This dynamic really made me resent her. I tried communicating many times. The load of bills and insane work hours along with not being able to enjoy, enjoy time with my baby all deeply upset me. When I was sure she is not going to listen to me, I filed for divorce. The court gave 50-50 custody, no alimony or child support since I proved it was her own decision to stay at home. Something I never agreed upon and her career break was around a year only. I moved back in with my parents and they have room for our baby too. Meanwhile, my ex-wife is struggling, living paycheck to paycheck. My baby stays with my mom when I work. My mom offered my ex the same, but she was so mad at me she refused to enroll our baby in a daycare. I refuse to pay for it since she can just leave our kid with my mom. My ex-wife and her friends are calling me the arsehole for divorcing her over being a stay-at-home mom and not providing any support. Am I the arsehole? Right, you might need to summarise this for me. I'm sorry for the lack of commas in there, Reddit. So, he's angry at her because she wants to be a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. But he doesn't want her to be a stay-at-home mom. Nope. For what reason? Well, basically, he the reason they fell in love and everything was because in college, she was really ambitious, this go-getter. They both wanted great careers. They were together for three years. They had their baby. And upon having the baby, she kind of went, do you know what? I think we can make this work of just you going out to work. And mm. then I can stay with the kid. I can raise the kid. It's better for the kid. All very valid arguments. But he's kind of gone, well, no, because that means I'm going to have to work more and I'm not going to be able to spend as much time with my kid. So as a compromise, why don't we try and work out shifts so we can tag team it? And she's kind of gone, well, no, I want to be a stay-at-home mum now to the point where he's divorced her over it and she's now having <laughs> to go out and work okay. and... He wants to put the kid in daycare, and I, I, there's a lot. Kind it's messy. Of, it's it's messy. very messy, it and, and, messy, and I feel like th it is messy. It's, it's a tricky one. This one, I think, if you have an option for one of you, it doesn't have to be the woman; could be the guy as well. For either of you to stay at home and with the kid, and one of you works, and it's enough to cover everything because daycare is expensive, nurseries are expensive as fuck, childcare is wild. If that is an option, I think that's a good option. I don't. I think that's an option that I would choose, even if it involved me giving up what I did to stay at home and look after the kid. I yeah. would do that. I kind of feel like he is massively undermining the work that goes into yeah. being a stay-at-home parent. Most people do not stay-at-home mother, stay-at-home parent. Mm. So whether you're male or you're female, and you stay at home to look after your kid. I'm like, that in itself is as much of a job mm -hmm. as going out to work and, and earning money for your household. Agreed. You're still massively contributing, but you're contributing to the family unit. Yes. Do you think that, I mean, there could be reasons that he's probably pissed off at her because they don't want to put the kid in daycare for the child to interact with other children. Do you know, there's, there's different but, arguments of, yeah. I think... Like, oh, I want to put them in daycare. We can both work. We'd both have the extra money. Yeah, it's going to cost more to have daycare, but our child will be interacting. Well, it will or... when he goes to school. It's not homeschooling, is it? Well, yeah, I If they were homeschooling, even homeschooling, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I, I don't know what this is based on. I don't, I don't know what this is based so, I mean, on. I mean, it's difficult. So don't shout at me, YouTube. But I think surely the bond with a kid and the parent is going to be better than the bond between daycare and the kid. Surely it's going to be better for the kid and the parent to spend all the time together than it would be 
for daycare and the kid to spend all the time together. And and let's. Not, I don't know what that's I, based on. I just no, kind of think that. I, would be I, I agree. I agree. And I don't think even the two are like mutually exclusive because I think, you know, if you are a stay at home parent, that doesn't mean that your kid's not going to interact with other little kids. Yeah. You'd no, you go to play groups, and... you'd go to sensory things, you'd go to loads of other things that I think would kind of give that kid a bond with other children as well and i'm kind of i think he's like he sees someone staying at home and parenting as well you haven't got a job and it's like no 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 that is a a reason that is a job in in itself and what he's saying is he doesn't want to kind of step up and take on that extra responsibility you, so he you think want, he wants it 50 50 he wants both parents 50 50 so you think it's like that like easier he's doing all the graft all the work bringing in all the money yeah. and she's like here because she's staying at home looking after the kids i think that's that's it's what, what he he's kind of like to. putting on her there okay, that's yeah. what he's projecting so that's why he's pissed off because he's like so, why, yeah. why am i doing all that stuff yeah whereas i well okay. why, why can't i stay at home and, and look after the kid but he doesn't want to do that he kind of he wants 50 50 or yeah. nothing yeah. He doesn't want to be a stay-at-home dad. He wants 50-50 or nothing. Which is, that's fair to him. But didn't he compromise taking it in shifts? So surely he would have to compromise some work to do that if he wants to stay at home with yeah, the kid he, or he equally. Yeah, he would. But he wants the 50-50 and them both to work. And right, that's yeah. why he found her attractive. Because she was ambitious and she was a go-getter. And I'm like, yeah, but she's, she's had a kid now. And her yeah. mind's probably changed on that. And she's gone, actually if it's between a child that is my own or my career, I'm I'm quite happy to sacrifice my career to, to give more to my child, which yeah. I think is so admirable anyway. And I know there are people that do ju- juggle both kind yeah. of thing, but I'm like, that's that's on both Their of you and your scenario well. and your, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. a lot of people can't afford for yeah, you know just one care. person to go out to work and the other stay at that's home what i mean that is another option maybe they can't afford to do that yeah maybe why he's pushing himself too hard do you know what i mean trying to bring in the money yeah i think there's ways of means though like i don't think i i think it depends what their expenditure is yeah i think it's, if there's a way that you can do it where one of you stays at home whoever it is and the other one works and maybe you don't have a nicer car or you don't yeah. go on holidays, or you don't. You can do whatever you want, but this is yeah. this is why I think if you could do that, then I think that's a solid way to start, rather than so you can spend that time together. And yeah, you're gonna have to sacrifice, but you're sacrificing in both ways. Mm. I understand why he's annoyed a little bit. I get why that's not what he thought parenting and being yeah. a parent would be like. Yeah. And now he's a bit like, well, this isn't what I thought it'd be like. I mm-hmm. thought we'd both be working. Kid would be. A, childcare and then we'll get back together and then we can do it that way but now you don't want to do that but i think he should support her in doing that yeah i think they should Eek. support each other but i equally i think maybe that's a conversation to have maybe if you're trying or do you know what yeah. I mean? before you have a children in terms of going forward what are we doing in regards to oh, again it's different situations in mm. it how much money can you save and do you know what i mean to make that happen but not only that i think sometimes uh, you know pff, i don't know this because i'm no. not well, none of i haven't got children, a child no. but i imagine i i'm gonna go especially with the woman because it is the woman that carries the child mm-hmm. and everything else i imagine that there is a time that when you've had that kid your perception on a lot of things changes mm. do you know what i mean mm. the Things like your career and uh, stuff that you held very, very highly prior to having kids might just completely Completely change around. And you're like, actually, I can't imagine not being Mm. away from them. I I can't imagine someone else giving them the love and attention that I would and everything else. So I'm like, I feel like it's a it's a tricky one, this. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's difficult. Filing for divorce is pretty bold, isn't it? Yeah, it is bold. On the grounds of this. Yeah. I feel like... Like... But, like, if you don't want to do it this way, and she does want to do it this way, and there's no compromise, I don't know where you go with it, but... Do you think he's probably thinking in his head because of how the situation is now in regards to he's at his parents, she's having to go out to work? 
do you think that maybe in his head he's like this is how i always wanted it to be it didn't have to be like this yeah whereas you're doing it now because you're in that situation we could have avoided all that yeah and you could have worked to the yeah. point yeah it's, it's it's two very different viewpoints of how to start and raise the first period of a family in it mm. yeah people have different viewpoints on it some people think their way is right some people think the other way is right I feel like it's tough that they, you know, it's sad that they couldn't come to a compromise on no. working out a better way to deal with it. Yeah. I, I personally, like, like I said, I would have supported her staying at home just because I personally think that's a good thing to do. Yeah. I think both are fine and good to do, mm. but I have a preference and that would be my preference. If mm. you can, I think you should. Mm. Either. Yeah. Either sex. Yeah. I feel yeah. like yeah. I've covered every base so people yeah. go, fucking <laughs> hammering for it. Don't be mad. I know, either male or female or whatever, whoever you are as a parent, I think whichever one, if you can do that, I feel like that time you could spend with the kid and the support of that would be beneficial. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I agree. It's tough though. Yeah. That's it for this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Don't forget, guys, if you do like the video, give us a thumbs up. It means a world to us. Bye.